Thank you. Thank you very much. At first, I really would like to uh, appreciate uh, the invitation and uh, the possibility to speak about uh, energy union, this time not in Brussels. Because uh, since the moment we put uh, the strategy and action plan on the energy union on the table in the February uh, 2015, it was uh, very clear that energy union will not be built in Brussels. It has to be built across uh, our member states, in our capitals, in our villages, in uh, um, our industry. We have to get on board uh, our transport operators, researchers. We have to look for the new innovative ways how to do the farming and agriculture. So the task was, of course, uh, extremely uh, huge. Therefore, we really split our efforts uh, in uh, these uh, uh, five uh, dimensions, and we've been working on it uh, in a very uh, tough uh, manner and uh, split the whole process into packages which had its internal logic, which had its own narrative and which have been so far very well uh, perceived and received by uh, public, by the market operators and uh, by uh, the industry. Today's uh, very special day, not only because I'm now competing with Chancellor Merkel in uh, speaking me here and she in uh, Strasbourg on her vision on the future of Europe, but also because uh, uh, we just uh, received the message that the European Parliament finally approved uh, what means such a key piece is on how the energy market will be formed in the future. And, uh, this is uh, the new targets uh, for having 32% of uh, our energy mix uh, in 2030 coming from renewables. And uh, they also improved more ambitious uh, targets for energy efficiency compa comparing to that one which uh, we presented in uh, Paris during the uh, Paris Agreement uh, negotiations. At the same time, I'm also very glad that uh, the governance uh, a proposal was approved because we don't need only the targets and ambitions, but we also need the system how to make sure that this change will really happen and that our member states uh, will now do their homeworks and they will present uh, to their peers and to the European Commission how they want to accomplish this task of energy transformation, of energy transition, and how they want to uh, present uh, the picture, how they see they countries in 2030. And I think this is something which is uh, very demanding. And I know that the work on this national energy and climate plans, as we call this strategy, is very demanding in every member state because it requires to sit together people from energy sectors uh, with the people from agriculture, research, transport, and really have a national strategy which, which would be compatible and well received, uh, not only uh, by the social partners, parliamentarians, and public in the concrete member states, but also has to be compatible um, with the policies of uh, the neighbors and other European partners, because we are talking about internal energy market. Of course, when uh, we've been looking at these uh, five dimensions, it was uh, uh, quite obvious that if you want to achieve a real progress and uh, marry better our competitivity with, uh, with uh, our uh, actions to tackle climate change, that we need to introduce and use much better the opportunities uh, which are offered to European uh, energy operators by the European single market. So we really focused a lot on what we have to do to make sure that finally in Europe we will have the internal uh, energy market. And we've been working on several strengths. We've been working on making sure that uh, uh, we put in place the proper hardware, meaning infrastructure, interconnectors, interconnections, that we would also work on the new energy software, mean, meaning new regulations, new rules, which would really help us to modernize uh, the uh, whole uh, sector. And I think that uh, what we presented as uh, this quite uh, demanding uh, package, which was called Clean Energy for uh, All Europeans, uh, really demonstrates that uh, what we are aiming for is the deepest uh, 
uh, transformation of the European energy system since uh, the second industrial revolution. Since the time when European energy systems been uh, built 150 years ago. What I mean by that? We are departing from the system which was centralized, which was based on uh, fossil fuels, which was uh, really national, into the system which would be European, decentralized, and based on new smart uh, technologies and new consumer powers. We uh, are really building and aiming and having well-functioning, fully integrated uh, uh, electricity market. I think that what we have seen over the last few years is uh, much better cooperation among the transmission system operators, among uh, uh, not only the TSOs but also uh, DSOs, because all of them discovered how important it is to have this European uh, dimension, uh, dimension of the cooperation. We have seen much more intense uh, collaboration and cooperation among the European uh, regulators, uh, also thanks to the uh, work of the Agency for the Cooperation of European Regulators, ACER, which is also one of the uh, last proposals which is currently discussed uh, in uh, the uh, European parliaments. So what we are currently uh, focusing our uh, attention on is uh, the last uh, pieces of the puzzle which we need uh, uh, to complete uh, before we can say that the priority of the energy union uh, was uh, accomplished. We still have to get an agreement on the new electricity market design, which I think is of uh, paramount importance to you, but also to the future of European economy. And we also need uh, the breakthrough in achieving clean mobility targets, which we discussed today the, the whole morning with the German Minister Altmaier, with the, with the uh, Minister uh, Schulz, and where it's quite obvious that uh, we have to do very important catching up to make sure that Europe will not only produce the best cars in the world, but this time they will be best and cleanest vehicles on this planet. That's our ambition, and this is what we have to uh, accomplish. Why coming back to electricity, this new electricity marking design is uh, so important? I have to say that uh, since I started to work on Energy Union, um, you would not be surprised to hear that national reflexes, if it comes to energy and electricity trading, are still very, very strong. Despite the fact that uh, we have these new targets for interconnections, and you know them very well, we want to have 10% by 2020, 15% by 2030, and we invest really uh, the, the millions and millions in uh, these new interconnection capacities. But what is the reality of today? More than 50% of the capacities for these interconnections is blocked by regulators. So we cannot use it for, tra for trading. We have some interconnections which are just simply blocked completely. They are used only in emergency situation. And this is something what we also want to tackle through the negotiations, through the discussions, uh, through looking for the good uh, regional solutions, but also through uh, this new electricity market design. And I think that uh, the priority of opening uh, of uh, the borders, priority of uh, market coupling, the uh, priority of really using the European scale uh, for uh, better business uh, opportunities also in energy sectors are more and more important because we all expect uh, that uh, the renewables will play uh, even more important role uh, in uh, uh, the future European energy mix. As I said, we expect that if it comes to electricity by 2030, we would have more than 50% of electricity generated by renewables. So here we are faced, of course, with a big challenge. You might have a wind in the north of Germany, you might have a sun uh, in Italy, and still you would have a lot of uh, you know, uh, problems how to get uh, that electricity where you need it because of very often not well working uh, single market uh, for energy. And therefore, we 
uh, uh, are trying through our proposal and through our actions to make sure that we would uh, maximize the possibility uh, to trade electricity across uh, the borders. We considered any restriction to trade of electricity uh, across the uh, border as something which should be seen exceptional and something which uh, uh, needs uh, to be justified uh, with the good uh, reasons, because otherwise it would be very difficult to make sure that we would have uh, really well integrated uh, electricity, uh, electricity market. I believe that uh, if we use it well, we will uh, create uh, the new uh, possibilities uh, for operators, but also for uh, the consumers, and we would also improve the security of uh, supply. We would be able to share our reserves better. We would be able to use uh, the interconnectors in more uh, efficient uh, uh, way, and uh, uh, we will be also able to help each other in a crisis uh, uh, situation whenever in Europe uh, they, might, uh, uh, they might occur. And I think this is very important message for Germany, especially because of the central location of this country, because of the importance and economic and energy weight uh, of Germany in, in European energy mix, and also because of very ambitious plans for uh, renewables, for North Sea offshore grid, uh, uh, wind park, where we expect that in the coming years uh, up to 100 gigawatt uh, of wind energy could be produced, and that energy, of course, would need to be uh, transported not only to Bavaria, uh, <laughs> and uh, preferably through the German infrastructure, not uh, around the German borders, but also, I believe, further to the central and southern Europe, because this is the potential of the, of the, of the North Sea and of the uh, wind energy, which is getting cheaper uh, and cheaper if it comes uh, to, the, to, the, to the costs. Another key element of the new electricity market design is uh, uh, this super focus on uh, uh, consumers. These new rules which we put on the table will allow anyone to generate, consume, store, and even uh, store the self-generated uh, uh, electricity and to be active player, active uh, uh, actor on uh, the energy market, but also participating actively in uh, this um, energy transition. So I think that even that uh, new name uh, which we gave to this type of uh, active consumers, and we call them uh, prosumers, is not even describing in a full extent uh, the scope of uh, this consumer empowerment uh, of uh, the package which we presented uh, because uh, they're getting rights like uh, never before and uh, they will be able to operate in the system which is much more transparent uh, than the system which we have uh, uh, right now. And uh, therefore, I believe that also lessons learned from Germany where we see very active uh, self-generation uh, uh, will be reaped uh, across the Europe and uh, uh, many member states uh, will follow the example of Germany in, in this uh, respect. So the new electricity market design will bring new uh, uh, players into the game, into the market. I think about uh, market aggregators, which will now be able to trade uh, aggregated uh, loads uh, from consumers in uh, uh, different uh, uh, markets, and they will be able to establish much better link between retail and wholesale markets. I expect that uh, energy communities uh, and cooperatives will play more and more into important role across uh, the euro because this new legal uh, framework uh, is uh, bringing uh, for them stronger legal basis and uh, it also motivates uh, the consumers to invest uh, into the uh, renewable means of uh, uh, electricity uh, production. Why this is important? I was, uh, I think, two weeks ago in um, Ireland, and uh, uh, a couple of days before that in uh, Netherlands. And you see that in many parts of Europe, the people uh, are um, not always uh, 
very eager when the new energy infrastructure is uh, built uh, in their backyard. There is even a special word that uh, there is very strong nimbyism in Europe. That meaning the feeling that not in my neighborhood is very strong. And I think that in the future it might really represent um, an obstacle to generate uh, more renewable energy in Europe. So there are very clever people who come with the idea how to change this NIMBY phenomenon into PIMBY phenomenon. What it means from not in my neighborhood into please in my neighborhood. And you can achieve it only if you involve the consumers, if you create uh, the, uh, the interest in uh, these uh, uh, generation capabilities and if you transform uh, uh, the, the peoples into active consumers, prosumers, uh, shareholders. Of course, uh, the, it goes without saying that the electricity system of the future will have to be much more sustainable, but it will also be uh, uh, more complex than uh, in the past. And transmission system and distribut uh, distribution system operators will have a key role as a neutral facilitator and enablers in uh, a system with an increased number of uh, decentralized two-way uh, market uh, uh, participants. While the negotiations of some parts of this package are not easy, I already told you about this uh, uh, just today approved uh, higher and more ambitious goals for renewables and for energy efficiency. And the good news is that uh, this higher ambition will bring us uh, uh, into 2030 with even higher reduction of greenhouse gas emissions than what we committed uh, ourselves to do under the Paris Agreement. As you remember, our commitment was minus 40%. Now with these new higher targets, it will be at least minus 45. But I believe that with the progress, especially in the clean mobility, and uh, uh, taking into account also the falling costs of um, uh, renewables, uh, we can overachieve uh, these goals if we implement all these uh, uh, new rules uh, timely and uh, precisely, and we will we'll start to abide by them uh, as of uh, beginning uh, of the next uh, uh, decade. That was the good news. The bad news is that even with all our efforts, according to the latest uh, UN IPCC uh, study, this is still not enough to tackle the climate change. That we are still uh, well uh, behind uh, uh, of what would be necessary to do if we want uh, to meet the target that we would not uh, let our planet overheat more than 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius. I think all of us uh, I'm sure we would agree that probably we haven't had uh, the, the hotter summer than, uh, than this year, hotter September, hotter October, hotter November, and you would not be surprised that uh, last uh, 14 years being hottest uh, on, uh, uh, on the records since the statistic started to be made. We do not have to be reminded of uh, the reality of the climate change when we see what's happening uh, today in California, that for the first time we had uh, uh, the fires because of uh, prolonged drought in Sweden and how we are tackling uh, with the floods in uh, Central Europe almost uh, every spring. So the nature is reminding us that we are doing something wrong and we have to do better in the future. Therefore, the heads of states and government asked the, the European Commission to present this autumn such a visionary piece. What should be the European uh, climate policy with the vision of uh, 2050. How should we build this carbon neutral second half of this century? This would be analytical document. We are finalizing it right now. We are going to approve it by the end of November and present it in COP24 in Katowice. But uh, I can tell you that uh, if you want to be in carbon neutral um, uh, future, we would need uh, to do even more. We would need to go for 19% uh, or 100% in certain sector of uh, greenhouse gas uh, 
uh, emissions uh, reduction. And we even have to uh, develop the new things which would help us to get the CO2 from the, from the environment and to develop the capturing technologies which would uh, help us to go in uh, some sectors into, uh, into the negative uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So you can imagine what kind of technological and political and behavioral challenge uh, uh, is uh, ahead of us and uh, how important it would be to have all sectors on board because we are well beyond energy production and distribution now. We have to tackle challenge in transport, in agriculture, in uh, energy efficiency of our uh, building stock, and more or less in all sectors where we use energy uh, for the future. So this would be the, the vision, the several scenarios which we are going to present. And then, uh, of course, uh, we will have uh, to have a very deep political debate, uh, which of the paths which we will charter, the Europe will choose, and how we are going to work with our uh, global partners to make sure that Europe is not alone in this effort, because we know that uh, just the Europeans will not save the planet. We need collective effort. We need, uh, we need uh, global community focus on this uh, very important uh, challenge uh, uh, on uh, the future. Uh, and I understand that there was uh, uh, a big uh, question of uh, unbundling. And uh, as you know, uh, the unbundling is something which is very important uh, for the Commission because we believe that uh, also through the reforms uh, which we did in the past, uh, we achieve uh, uh, much better results and that uh, this separation process should be also very important uh, uh, for the future. I understand uh, that one of the sensitive issues in uh, this request uh, is uh, energy storage. And uh, uh, our conviction, which is currently being discussed in the European Parliament and uh, among the member states, uh, uh, is uh, how to make sure that energy storage operators would become a real uh, player, real actors uh, on the market, and how we would make sure they would achieve uh, the uh, full potential. So we would prefer uh, the unbundled solutions. We know that there might be exceptional cases where simply the market, uh, uh, because of some specific uh, uh, conditions, would not allow for that. So let's discuss them. But at, uh, first, let's try to use to the maximum this new electricity market design, which I believe uh, will be approved by the end of this year, thanks to the enormous uh, intense work of Austrian presidency. And let's use it uh, for the maximum, because I believe that it will give uh, Europe the energy which would be cleaner, which would be cheaper, and it will give uh, uh, the European companies the first mover advantage, uh, which would uh, bring them into the new markets uh, in Africa, in India, practically everywhere in the world, because everyone has to do the same decarbonization efforts as Europe did, if we want to make sure that we would uh, preserve our planet for our children. Thank you very much. Mr. Vice President, thank you very much for that uh, very comprehensive overview. I know that you literally have one minute, so one question, uh, if, if you don't mind. Um, you, you said that climate change is a reality, um, and actually you, you recently wrote a blog, and I think it was called, What Can We Still Learn From The Paris Agreement? And you've spoken a little bit about uh, the, the, the conclusions um, from, from Paris. But I'd just like in the, in the one um, couple of minutes we have left, if you can look ahead and just tell us what your expectations and wishes are from uh, COP24 later this year, please. Here because the mic is on. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And once again, uh, the, the, the apologies for um, uh, for this early early departure. Because you know, if uh, uh, Bundeskanzler Amt is calling you, you have to go. So <laughs> so we have we have our uh, continuation of a discussion uh, discussion there. But uh, uh, responding to uh, um, uh, to your uh, to your question, I think that. Uh, Currently, there are very intense negotiations, and I know that uh, my very good colleague, uh, 
who is now in the presidency of COP24, uh, the Polish minister, Michal Kurtyka, is doing his utmost to make sure that this major expected deliverable, this uh, single rule book, would be, would be approved in Katowice. Why is it so important? It's so important because it would create the same framework for the rules, for accounting, for measuring the emission, for assessing the progress, meaning that it would be much easier for all of us to assess who is, let's say, free riding, who is overachieving, uh, or, or who is, let's say, not up to the challenge, and we should try to, to help uh, the country by the means of development aid or some kind of policy, policy incentive. I expect that we will achieve uh, that, but I also hope that the COP24 would send another momentum how important it is not only to live up to our Paris commitments, but to, to think a little bit beyond uh, 2030. Because uh, here I know that I'm talking to the energy professionals, you know very well that investments you do today will stay with you for another 30, 40, 50 years, depending on what kind of uh, power you invest in. And I think that we have to be more and more aware about the risk of investing in stranded assets, to invest into the technologies which could be obsolete in 10, 15 years, and, uh, uh, and uh, to make sure that investments uh, are going into the sectors and into the areas which would be um, well aligned with uh, that uh, uh, ambitions which uh, we as, a, as a Europeans have. I think that would be uh, another lesson which would be very important. And I am bringing to the COP24 too such a, I would say, personal uh, priorities for myself uh, upon which I, I work a lot. After the Bundeskanzler armed discussion, uh, I'm traveling to Lausitz this evening where we will have a, a discussion. I will spend the whole day tomorrow uh, in Lausitz, uh, Lausitz talking to the uh, coal mining industry. Because I think that uh, what is very important in this effort is to acknowledge and recognize that this energy transition is not easy. And that it's our duty to make sure that the people who are working in uh, uh, such a demanding sectors like the coal mining is, that uh, we will work with them on what uh, would be the next political uh, and economic future. What would be the next uh, big thing uh, from the point of view of employment or economic development in the regions. We establish this platform for the carbon uh, intensive and energy intensive uh, uh, regions and we are trying to make it as simple as possible. If this core regions wants to work with us, we are ready to offer our expertise, our modeling skills and work with the regions on charting what could be the next economic uh, key feature for this region. Once we agree that this could be the vision, then we want to work with this region on what kind of projects will get us uh, to materialize this vision. And if you have that set of projects agreed, then we are looking for the ways how we can finance it with the national, European, international financial institutions money. And this is what we do currently for seven of our member states. We'll see the Germany, Lausitz and other regions would be interested as well and we are ready to work with them as well. This approach of uh, uh, European Union was very, I would say, intriguing uh, for another platform upon which I'm working, Global Covenant of Mayors, because the challenge of uh, coal uh, region transition, it's not unique to Europe. We have uh, such regions all over the place, and therefore uh, there is strong interest in COP24 to share our first experiences and, 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 and to, to show what we can do and how we can, how we can work. And uh, my second, I would say, such a contribution to COP24 would be to share with our global partners what we are uh, doing in the electromobility, how we want to kickstart this industry, create this new ecosystem of making sure that the green batteries will be manufactured in, uh, in, in Europe. And uh, therefore, if uh, we would leave Katowice with, with a good rule book, with a positive atmosphere and good momentum to tackle climate change, and with a good discussion on these uh, two personal priorities of mine, I'll be a happy man and I'll go happy for a Christmas. You know? <laughs> and thank you very much. Thanks.